Hey, hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Sunday Blather. It's me, Reverend Lindy, without the dog collar today, but um, but still here to talk to you all and give you a wee Sunday Blather um, on the subject of personal altars. And um, well, I'll talk about them in a wee minute, but let's see if anybody's going to come on and join me. If not, I'll save it as a wee video and um, and I'll post it later. I know it's a lovely day and many people are probably um, outside. I don't even know if this is going to work because what I'm going to try and do is just chat to you from here and then turn the camera onto my altar so that you can see it and you can just um, hear me talking. And I do have Airbnb guests staying at... Um, at the moment, they're not in, but they might uh, they might come back in. So you might hear somebody come in going, Hello, Lindy! And uh, a lovely couple from uh, Tuscany. So we're going to have a pizza making night this week. They're going to teach me to make proper Italian pizza, which is just awesome. Just awesome. But um, I'm here. I've got my wee cup of tea. I've got my Tunnock's tea cake, even though I made a big caramel cake yesterday. If I eat any more than that, any more of that, I'll not be able to fit on the camera. But um, because you think these are full of sugar, you should taste my caramel cake. But um, yeah, so I'm here and I'm talking about personal altars. What is a personal altar? Well, I think we're all familiar with the word altar and. Um, probably we uh, we relate it to the church and to religion and um, altars in the church or the chapel, you know, that place at the front where all the rit ritualistic items are. Mm. And there are so many um, beautiful altars around when you go, go into these uh, um, places of worship, you see these beautiful altars. And um, it's usually a raised, a raised structure where uh, people either go to worship or, as I say, you put these ritualistic items that would be used in worship. I think the name, the word altar just means raised up, if I'm right. But, um, right, there's two people watching. I can't see who you are. Please come on and let me know. We're talking about altars today, personal altars. And... Um, I'm going to show you my wee altar in a minute. This is not a definitive masterclass on a personal altar. Hi, Dave. This is not a personal, uh, sorry, a, a masterclass on what an altar should be because actually it's a really personal thing. But I know a few people had um, expressed interest in my altar when they've seen it in pictures a couple of times. And so I thought I would just come on and talk about it because um, it's very important to me. And so, yeah, we're all familiar with that word altar. It's usually we, um, when we think about it, we think of it in a religious context, in the church or in the chapel. But there are loads of people who have their own wee personal altars, wee places of um, worship. And I think that for me, having a personal altar really... Um, there's sort of three different reasons or three different ways in which I would, would in which I would use it. So one is I think that people use it for worship. They use it for worship or prayer. So it's a place where they can go to because having your own personal altar is like having a, a sort of centre point for your religious, uh, sorry, your spiritual practice or your religious practice, if that's what you want to call it. It's like having uh, that we... Um, specific area that we nook that you can go to whenever you want to um, carry out your spiritual practice so whether that's just conversations with your god whether it's just meditating it's a place where you can go and it's a kind of outward representation of your inner attunement if you like but um it's also a place where you can go and you can give offerings you can you can show your gratitude for what you have in your life and that's something that's probably really familiar with a lot of people, especially if you go out to the to the Far East, if you go out to Asia, you see these wee temples, these wee places of worship, um, wherever you go. Almost every house has one. Hi, Jan. Every house has one. Every restaurant has one. The best one I ever saw was in Bali. If you go to Seminyak in Bali, there's a bar called the Red... The Red Shoe Champagne Bar or the Red Hat Champagne Bar. The Red Something Champagne Bar. Anyway, 
as you can tell, it's a champagne bar. And but outside it, it has this um, it has this wee sort of temple area where they go every day and they they give offerings to of gratitude to their gods. But in the champagne bar, every day what they come in, they do when they come in is they pour a glass of champagne and they go out to the wee temple and they leave the, the glass of champagne there for the gods. Now, if I was going to be a god of any kind, I can't think of anything I would rather have than a wee glass of uh, Moe Chandon or something. So uh, that's a really nice way. But as I say, very, very common throughout the Far East of people coming out at certain times of the day, usually in the morning and at night, and leaving these wee offerings, often uh, items of food or um, some sort of wee herbs or plants, just as a wee thank you to their gods. But, um, so that's another way of doing it, is, is, is a place where you can go and you can express your gratitude for what you have in your life. And let's face it, we all have a lot to be grateful for in our lives. So that's one, two things you can use it for. One is worship, second is gratitude, and the third for me is a place where you can attract things. So if I'm looking to bring something into my life, whatever that might be, I would take something that represents what I'm thinking about and um, I would place it on the altar and I would have a wee uh, uh, spiritual practice around that and, and bringing that into my life. And, um, and that can be anything. That can be, you know, good health. It might be love. It might be um, finance. It might be friendship, you know, success. It might be healing. Uh, healing for the world it can be anything at all but um but so that's the three ways that I use my altar and um and I use it at different things for at different times so let's I'm going to turn my camera and I'm going to wait till we see who's looking off my glasses hi Rachel lovely to see you and Dave's on and Jan's on right I'm going to turn it so that you can see my altar and then I'm going to talk through what um what I have so as I say, an altar is usually a raised structure, and you can see this is a wee raised structure. This is actually an antique um, Fortnum, and Mason, Fortnum and Mason Christmas hamper. So I got it in my favourite old antique shop, and that's what I use as my altar. It has a wee flint on the side of it here. I don't know if you can, can you see, so I have my matches. I've got a wee uh, flint on the side of it so that I can actually light uh, my candles or light my incense. So what do you put on your personal altar? Well, as I say, because of the fact it's personal, you can put anything on it that's meaningful to you. If you know me, and, and especially around ceremony and ministry, you'll know that I'm always talking about uh, energy and how spaces have their own energy, but also that whatever you bring into a space brings its own energy. So as a celebrant, when you are conducting a ceremony or a funeral service, you're always thinking about the items that you're bringing into that ceremony space because you know each brings its own energy. And people bring their own energy. That's why uh, celebrants, a lot of people think they just get up with a book and read. They don't. They're actually trying to work with energy in the room and create a single energy you know taking all the energy that's brought from all the different items and from the people and from the room and they're creating a single energy that everybody can feel and so that's why i'm very very um particular about the items i use in my ceremonies everything usually comes from somewhere quite spiritual in scotland everything is blessed everything is usually handmade apart from my, my wee toad here um, he's my spirit animal, but um, yeah, so very careful about what goes on to my altar. But usually people would put things on there that would represent the four elements or the five elements of um, nature. So I, I try and represent the five elements. So um, and, the four, and the four directions and they, they kind of tie in with each other. So from the north, the direction of the north and the north um, represents the earth, Mother Earth. So in my altar, you can see I have things like, I have a wee um, bowl of salt. So we've all heard the phrase salt of the earth. But I also have crystals, which represent the earth. I have things that grow. So I've got lavender, 
I've got heather, I've got some herbs, I've got a rosemary, which is for remembrance, I've got some thyme. For the south, which uh, represents the element of fire, I have the candles, you can see the candles on, I also have some incense burning. From the, the west and the element of water, I have my quake, it doesn't actually have water in it, it has the, the water of life, it has whiskey. In there. And from the east and the element of air, I have um, this feather, an eagle's feather, that somebody gave to me after I conducted their, their wedding ceremony and um, they let me keep that. And for me, for the element of space, I also have a wee stone that I brought back from the NASA Space Centre in Florida. And um, oh, and I have my Ogham wand. So Ogham, an ancient alphabet, and this actually uh, says on here, strength of the deer. This was handmade, not by me, but handmade by a girl, a local girl. She um, she got this in Loch Tay and everything is reclaimed. Everything that's on it's reclaimed. So I also have my beautiful uh, dish here that was given to me by a friend. It's got a wee toad on it, a toad's my spirit animal, and it's got different crystals on it. I've got the, uh, what do you call it, thingy salt, Himalayan salt a candle holder, and I've got, again, a wee toad uh, incense holder because the toad is my spirit animal. So that's the kind of basics that I would have on it for the four or the five elements. But then you start thinking about things that you want to put on there to either that, that are personal to you. So you can see I've got a wee picture of Lockie Lou and I here. So things that are personal to you that I would always want a picture of wee Lockie on there. But as I say, if you are coming on here because you want to attract something, then you would, or, or I would, put something on here that represented that. So, for example, last week, um, I was looking at my finances and I was thinking, okay, it would be quite nice to have some more bookings coming in, to have some more money coming in. Obviously, COVID has turned everything upside down. So I brought my purse and I opened it up on here. It's very important to open it up so that it's receiving. And I did a wee practice round about attracting, um, attracting more uh, money or more finances. Now, this is the law of attraction in action. It's not a case, you can't just put it on there and say, right, fill my purse and all of a sudden you become a millionaire overnight. That's not how the law of attraction works. What you're doing there is unconsciously you are um, entering into a very focused state where you're thinking about, okay, I want my bookings to grow and through that more money will come in, but um, I'm putting that there I'm thinking about so what needs to happen wedding bookings or ceremony bookings need to come in I need to be thinking about training I need to be thinking about different things and so I did that I spent some time doing that and the next day it was the very next day I got two couples who brought their ceremonies forward from 2021 to next month so of course that means that ceremonies have to be paid in full I I got a training booking so there's two training bookings, but two types, two different types of training booking. And um, and you could say, OK, that would have happened anyway. But then I get two couples from 2021 contacting me saying, can we pay the balance of what we owe just now? And that gets it out of the way, which was just awesome. And um, to me, that's the law of attraction in action. So if that was health, if I was looking to... Uh, attract good health for me or for somebody else if somebody's asked me to do a wee health and healing blessing for them I would take something that represents them and when they think about their, their good health and I would put that on my altar if it was to represent you know somebody who was looking for for love in their life I would take something from them that would represent that and I would put that in my altar and do a wee uh, uh, as I say spiritual practice or prayer around that but, of course, different things go on the altar at different times. So I wanted, because I know Susie was asking, Susie Chown was asking about inside my altar. So, and this is one of the reasons why I chose this as my altar. Because, oops, come on, we toad. 
because if you open it up, it's got all these wee spaces inside. I hope you can see that. Can you see it? I hope so. And um, and I have all these different things in here that I can bring out um, if I want to, depending on what's going on in my life. So um, at the back here, I have a wee handprint of Lockie. I also have some oracle cards and these are important to me because when I was at God's school and I was having a really tough time and they did uh, again a wee sort of spiritual session and asked us to, we had to choose, you know, cards blindly and I got uh, trust and the other one was the root chakra, I have everything I need within me. So they're very important to me. I have a wee tub of crystals that one of my wedding couples gave me. I have my bracelet that I got, that I wore when I was ordained. We were all given a wee, made, these were made for us and we wore them. I have my lovely wee wax melts that Susie gave me. Susie, there's your wax melts that Susie gave me last week. I have some wee candles that I can uh, obviously use for my, uh, for my candle holders. I have a nothing stone that was given to me by... A family whose son died in a motorbike accident and, and his mum made that for me. So very meaningful, very um, attached to that. I have Sir Edmund, the Kiwi, uh, that um, my grandson gave me. I have another wee thing that my grandson gave me. I have a wee uh, New Zealand uh, coin that he sent me. He's, he wants to use that to buy me a cake the next time I'm out there. I have another wee... A candle holder that's really important to me. I picked up somewhere. I have one of my hand fasting, you know, Harris Tweed ribbons. I always keep a compass so that you always know where the four directions are. I have something that represents the Kalanish standing stones because I love that place. I have my journal. People will often put sacred texts um, into their on their altars I have my and, and journals and I have my journal and I have a wee um, fountain pen again you're thinking about everything and the energy that it would bring a big pen or a fountain pen you know there's n there's no real um, uh, contest there is there so I have my journal that I write in I have some extra incense I have my wee thing that puts my candles out um, and I have a wee Tree of Life necklace. So I just have different wee things that go in there that are important to me and that I might want to use depending on what's going on with my altar, what's going on with my life, really, sorry, I should have said, um, that I would bring out and put onto my altar. And I'm always, to be honest, I'm always uh, on the lookout for wee things that that can go on here and um, that I can use that are meaningful to me. So that's my, oops, that's my altar, my wee personal altar. And uh, this stays up in my bedroom. It sits in the, uh, uh, an area in my bedroom. There's nothing round about it. If you're gonna do your wee personal altar, you want it to be in a place, you don't want any guddle round about it, you don't want any sort of mess or anything. So this sits up in an area of my bedroom where there's there's nothing else around it. There's just the altar. It has its own space. And as I say, then everything that's on it creates its own energy. And, um, and that wee spot in my bedroom becomes like a wee energy nook. So... I only put things on there that have good energy and I the idea is that that energy emanates from there. It's like having, I don't know, the moon or the sun in the corner of your bedroom and all that energy, that good positive energy emanates from there right throughout the whole of my house and imbues me when I'm sleeping so that I wake up happy and I always wake up happy. If you know me, you know I always wake up happy. And... Um, and yeah, and you can create this really beautiful area of energy in your house that you can go to and you can just stand. For, you don't have to meditate for an hour and a half. You can just stand there and think, what am I grateful for in my life? What three things am I grateful for? And just say thank you. And, um, and, and what would I most like to bring into my life just now? Would that be peace? Would it be peace of mind? And... Um, what do I have that represents peace of mind to me? 
find something that can be a bit of cloth, that can be a bit of um, it can be a wee bit of stone. The more natural it is, the better. And um, put it in your wee altar and just spend some time thinking about what peace of mind would mean to you. And um, I absolutely promise you that uh, it can it can change your life on a, on a daily basis. A daily basis, because it is something that you should practice daily. Okay, that's my wee altar. I wait to see who else is watching. Oh, Lisa's watching, Diane's watching, Rachel's watching, Jan's watching, Dave's watching. That's really lovely. So, um, it's been nice to talk to you on wee Sunday blether. I'm away to finish my Tunnock's tea cake and uh, have a great Sunday, and I'll speak to you all soon. Okay, fair far.